885, it is a fully human BCMA directed CAR T cell product. Now, uniqueness about this product is that it uses this T charge platform where the CAR T product is produced in less than two days. So instead of currently required three to four weeks, at least two plus weeks, this can be produced in a very short time of two days. And that is the attraction because when it takes four days to produce, patients require bridging therapy. Sometimes patients are not able to get to the treatment because their disease is very progressive, especially when we treat them at the fifth and sixth line. So this quick production is the key to this particular product. Now, this study conducted at Dana-Farber um, uh, with uh, Dr. Adam Sperling from our group leading this work um, has been evaluated in patients with relapse and refractory myeloma. Usual patient population where CAR T cells are currently being evaluated in, in many settings. So we have so far treated 15 patients in a dose escalation form, 2.5 million cells, 5 million, and, and one patient had a more than 10 million cells. So even at a very small dose of 2.5 million cells, we had an overall response rate of 75%. And patients with 5 million and more than 10 million group, both groups had 100% response rate. So it's, it's an amazingly effective treatment. And the patients in this study um, had, an, on an average, uh, over 5 million lines of treatment, um, all high-risk disease, 100% triple-class refractory patient populations. Now, if you look at the safety profile, um, patients, uh, all patients, 15 patients, develop CRS with 87% um, grade 1 and 2 CRS, 13% had 3 or higher grade of CRS. Um, and, and most of the patients were treated with tocilizumab, and 80% of the patient, 12 out of 15, required um, uh, steroid for management. Four patients, 27%, had uh, neurotoxicity, which were grade 12. Um, so responses being so high, now our focus is going to be on maintenance of the response. And this is a very new study, so we are waiting for uh, overall response, uh, PFS, um, to be identified. At the current times, with the median follow-up only 3 and 3.5 months, eight of the 15 patients have an ongoing response currently with two patients having a progressive disease and eventually dying from this treatment. Um, very importantly, the way these cells are produced with a short, um, short time, we find that the CRS is very predictable, happens uh, around day, uh, uh, median of day 14, uh, which is when maximum expansion happens. Um, and um, the cellular kinetics also suggest uh, a very predictable dose response related kinetics with persistence of cells beyond three months, um, which is the median follow up is three and a half months. Uh, this soluble BCMA predictably goes down. Um, and uh, if you look at the, the CRS timing, which uh, I was about to mention, um, it also has a dose response relationship that the higher dose CRS happens um, slightly early. And the dose, uh, overall dose is very small, anywhere from 2.5 to 5 million cells. Uh, very importantly, if you look at the cell, uh, phenotype of the cell, they are shifted towards naive to T stem cell like cells, um, uh, and which is observed um, following infusion on day 11 to day 28. And so in, in patients who are um, uh, uh, treated with this product, um, they become more stem cell-like uh, with both CD4 and CD8 component. And this is observed more frequently in patients who have VGPR uh, or higher group, but not in the patients who have either progressive disease or only partial response. So the, the phenotype of the cells has a relationship to the, to the overall outcome in this patient population. So to summarize um, this particular product, PHE 885, um, um, showing manageable safety profile has a very encouraging clinical response. Um, and very importantly, persistence of T cells in vivo um, with significant expansion and phenotypic characteristics, um, which is um, stem cell, stem-like memory T cells um, provides great potential 
for a longer term persistence of response and persistence of the cells.